Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Hopalong Cassidy. Original air dates December 8th, 1951, and the title is The Secret in the Hill. Hope you enjoy. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? It's one that I feel mighty lucky I'm alive and able to tell. Because it's about a time California and I had our narrowest escape. We call it The Secret in the Hill. Early one morning, we were riding through the Chenango Pass country when we noticed a sign nailed to a fence post. I pulled off the trail to read it. I don't like this, California. Listen to what this says. $500 reward. Wanted, dead or alive, killer of Fred Benson, son of Wade Benson of Chenango Pass, by order, sheriff. If they get a reward up for him, he's probably run halfway to hallelujah by now. Maybe so. But he might still be around playing possum. I don't know, Hoppy. Seems only reasonable for a killer to vamoose if he got the chance. Uh, it depends on how and why the victim was killed. If we find the reason for Fred Benson's murder, we'll find his killer. We will? Sure. Mm, uh, you mean uh, you want us to find a reason we don't know why a murderer we don't know killed a man uh, we don't know? Uh, 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 no, no. That's just too many things we don't know, Hawk. <laughs> Then we'd better start learning the answers right now. Come on. We're riding for Chenango Pass to catch a killer. Nobody answers, Hoppy. You figure this is the right place? Yeah. Wade Benson's name is on the gate. Knock again. Up your hands, you two. I got you covered. What? Uh, there. Uh, look, Hoppy. He's covering us from the window with a rifle. And I'll just keep it pointing at you while you state your business here. I don't state anything with a rifle aimed at me, stranger. But if you're Wade Benson, we're here as friends. That ain't saying who you are. I'm Hopalong Cassidy. This is my partner, California Carlson. Hopalong Cassidy? Hoppy, you son of a gun. Just a second, I'll get the door open for you. Hmm. Mighty queer way for Benson to welcome callers with a rifle in his hands. With a murderer loose, he probably figures on playing safe. Well, come right in, gents. I, I apologize for that business at the window. I've been kind of leery of strangers lately. I understand, Benson. Uh, come on out, Ma. It's all right. Ma, meet Hopalong Cassidy and California Carlson. Why, howdy. Howdy, ma'am. Won't you sit down? Thank you, ma'am. Well, you folks may be wondering why California and I are here. The reason is we saw the sign down the road about your son being killed. You think you can do something about catching the skunk that murdered Fred? I don't know yet. First, I'd like to find out why he was killed. Did your son have any enemies around here? Enemies? He didn't know anybody hereabouts. Why, he hardly even talked to anybody before he was shot. Well, here's the whole story, Mr. Cassidy. Ma and me come out here just a month ago. We had our savings, $10,000, and we got a chance to buy this gold mine. Fred was studying to be a mining engineer in a college back east, and we wanted to surprise him. So we bought the mine with our savings. A gold mine for $10,000? Didn't that seem pretty cheap? Well, maybe, but the record showed that $100,000 in gold had been taken out of that mine in two years. We're no doubt about it. I see. So what happened after you bought the mine? Well, we tried to get a loan at the bank in Columbia City for cash to work the mine. They told us the mine was no good. All worked out. I've heard of that happening before. The gold vein peters out and there just ain't nothing left. Yeah, that's what they told me. I tried to find the slicker sold me the mine, but 
fellow named Slim Daniels, but he'd skipped out. We wrote our boy Fred about it, and he'd come out just as soon as he could get here. Fred figured maybe there just might be a chance we could get a little more gold out in that mine. Maybe get our money's worth back. So the morning after he got here, he set out to look over the mine. That's the last time we saw him. Yeah. He was found late in the afternoon. Shot dead. Huh. It's sure hard to figure. Wait, uh, just what did Fred do during the day? Did he go right to the mine? No. First, Fred borrowed some tools from Rod Black's mine supply store over in town. Then went to the mine. Oh, around noontime, he sent a note for me to the store by an old prospector called Pat Mule Parker. Rod Black brung it to me later. Said the mine was no good. That's all we know. Fred sent a note? Exactly what did it say, Benson? Well, I still got it right here in my wallet. You read it yourself, Mr. Cassidy. Uh, let's see. It says there's no gold at all. It's a dead mine. Yes, that's pretty different about the mine being no good. Too bad you couldn't get something out of it for your 10000 Oh, Rod Black offered us $1,000. Says he can salvage his equipment. Ore buckets and rock crushing machinery and such stuff. At least that's something. So that's the story. Fred examined the mine, sent this note, and was killed. Well, that's it, Mr. Cassidy. His murderer seems to have got away. A low-down, sneaking snake. Even a snake leaves a trail, Benson. And I don't intend to let this one get away. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Secret in the Hill. Hoppy in California are looking into the killing of Fred Benson, who was found mysteriously shot after he had inspected a worthless gold mine his father had bought. Having heard the story of the murder from old Mr. and Mrs. Wade Benson, Hoppy and California have ridden to the place close by the mine where Fred's body was found. Notice something, California? All these boulders around here give plenty of cover for whoever ambushed Fred Benson. Anyone on this trail could be followed for miles without knowing it. Sure. Why, the killer could be hiding behind some boulder 20 feet from where we're standing right now, and uh, we'd never know it. Sure. <laughs> we- what in suffering blue blazes is there? Somebody laughing. The question is, where is it? <laughs> Skin me for a jackrabbit. Hey, uh, here he comes, Hoppy, from behind that big rock. Well, what were you up to hiding those rocks, stranger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just wanted to show you how right she was about a body could hide out in these rocks. Me and Molly been following you for a mile. You did every word you said, to. <laughs> Molly? Uh, who's that? Who's that, he wants to know. Come on out here, Molly, and say howdy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at there, Hoppy. Molly's a mule. Yeah, a pack mule. I guess you're pack mule Parker then, stranger. Yeah, that's me, pack mule Parker. And since you know who I am, I reckon you knows everything around here belongs to me and you're trespassing on my property. Your property? You mean you got title to all this land? Title? I don't take no stock in titles. I come out here 30 years ago when there weren't nothing but coyotes and jackrabbits living in these here hills. I had the first one here. So everything all around here is mine by natural rights. I see. And so you consider anyone who comes by a trespasser? Sure. Keeps me mighty busy protecting my property. Watching everyone that comes poking around. Listen, Parker. Were you watching that mine over there two weeks ago when young Benson came here? Sure. Saw him get in, saw him come out. Fred Benson gave you a note to deliver, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I come down to warn him off the property... But he gave me two bicks to take this note to Rod Black's store so Rod could give it to his pa. He's a real nice boy, too. All smiling and happy about something. Anyhow, I just went along and delivered the note to Rod straight away. You say Fred Benson was smiling and happy? He sure was. I see. You know that Fred Benson was killed right here that same afternoon, don't you, Parker? Sure, I know it. Hey! Hey, where are you going? Get away from Molly. I'm just admiring this rifle strapped on the mule, Parker. Pretty old. Beautiful handmade gun. Oh, yeah. I brought it out from Kentucky with me. With that rifle, I can pick a flea off in a skunk's ear at a thousand yards. Did you ever maybe pick off a trespasser like Red Benson and what you call your property? Oh, look at here, stranger. Whether I did or whether I didn't, 
Ain't nothing that you got to talk about. Give me back my gun, mister. Sure, here you are. Oh, wait a minute. What's this you got carved on the gun stock? Uh, that's my signature. Can't you see? Oh, yes, of course. Well, California, let's get on to Rod Black's store in Chenango Pass. I want to talk with him. So long, Parker. Uh, better be goodbye, because I don't want you trespassing on my property. If you got any notions to go poking around down that mine yonder, I'm warning you, you might never come out again. And that's all I got to say. Come on, Molly. <laughs> You know, Hoppy, I get two ideas about Pat Mule Parker. One, <laughs> he's plumb loony, and two, he shot Fred Benson. California, there's no doubt that you're at least half right. <laughs> Howdy. Which one of you men is Rod Black? That's me, stranger. You looking for something in the way of mining equipment? No, just now I'm looking for some information. You don't say. Information? About what? Fred Benson. Fred Benson, eh? Well, who are you to be asking about Fred Benson? I'm Hopalong Cassidy, and this is California Carlson, my partner. Well, Hopalong Cassidy. Uh, well, now, about Fred Benson... The sheriff's laid up with a busted leg, and being a deputy, I'm handling this shooting case myself. Then I'd like to hear your ideas about the murder, Black. He ain't got no ideas. Everybody except Marad knows that only two people are going to kill Benson. So? Well, Black, what about these two people who could have shot Benson? And Cassidy, it's this way. There's a loony old coot named a pack mule Parker. That's yeah, we ran into him. He's got the mistaken idea that he owns practically all the mining country around here and has to protect it against trespassers. Is it your idea that Parker figured Fred Benson was trespassing on his property and shot him? Well, ain't no question Parker's loony, and of course he might have done it. All right, that's one suspect. What about the other? Well, now, I ain't sure of this neither, but uh, some folks think it could have been Slim Daniels. Slim Daniels? Uh, ain't that the feller uh, that sold that worked-out gold mine to old Benson and then skipped out? He didn't skip out. Folks seen him skulking around through the hills. Ain't no mistake in that pinto he ride. That's right, Cassidy. Some folks figure Fred Benson met up with Slim by accident. Fred demands the money back and goes for Daniels. Slim pulls his gun and shoots the boy. It's possible, of course. Yeah, but it's all guesswork. We need proof, some evidence. Well, how you figure you're going to get evidence, Mr. Cassidy? Fred was shot shortly after he'd been down looking into that mine. There must be a connection. I'm going down into the mine to find it. Well, Cassidy, we're willing to help you run down whoever done the killing. But you don't need our help poking into that hole. Anyhow, good luck to you. Come on, folks. Uh, Cassidy... I personally figure you'll be wasting time going into that mine. And besides, it's like to be kind of dangerous. Seems like the idea that mine's mighty dangerous is kind of popular. Old Parker hinted at it, too. That's right, Black. Why is it dangerous? Now, these hills is kind of a loose rock formation. And that mine Benson bought never had enough timber and put up inside. A tunnel ceiling could easy cave in. I still think we'll take the chance, Black. After all, Fred Benson came out of the mine all right. Sure, sure, Cassidy. It's your own neck you're risking. All right, then. We'd like to borrow a few things from your stock, Black. A couple of picks, some candles, and a few sticks of dynamite. Well, if you're looking for gold in that mine, even dynamite won't help you. Well, here's your stuff. There's picks, candles, dynamite, some fuse, and caps. Well, will that do you? Yeah, that'll be fine. Well, I'll just take it into the back room put it all in a sack for you. Be right out. I ain't saying I like the idea of going down in that hole, Hoppy. Uh, what you figuring looking for down there? For whatever it was Fred Benson found that made him happy and smiling when he came out and met Pac Mule Parker. Hoppy, I flat refuse to go with you. What, California? What do you mean? I refuse to go unless first we stop at that hash house down the street and eat a two-pound beefsteak. I'm nigh starved. <laughs> All right, California. Judging from the looks of that broken-down hash house, a good steak will be as scarce as the gold in Benson's mind. Here you are, Cassidy. Picks, candles, dynamite, and fuse. All in the sack. Uh, anything else I can do for you? Just wish us luck, Black. Well, you sure need luck going into that mine. Uh, forget the mine, Black. Uh, wish us luck with our beef steak. <laughs> Now, 
Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Secret in the Hill. Hoppy, I feel like we've been walking through this tunnel for miles. Well, I think we're nearly at the end of the shaft. Watch it, California. Here's another sharp turn. Well, here we are. Tunnel widens into a sort of room here. This is as far as the mine goes. Yeah, and I'm sure glad it don't go no further. Well, let's set our candles on this rock shelf. Now, give me one of those picks. I want to probe these walls a bit. Right. And I'll open the sack and I'll... Up. Up. Don't take another step forward. Move back slow. This way. What? Just in front of you, Hoppy. Rattlesnakes. Whew, that was close. Hey, there are dozens of them. Oh, dozens? Look yonder, Hoppy. There's a whole swarming pile of them. Hundreds. Uh, sure enough. It's a den of rattlers. They often hole up in an underground place like this. Some of them are crawling toward the tunnel. Uh, we better get out of here, Hoppy. I ain't hankering to wade through rattlesnakes. All right, California. Let's move out along the wall here. You don't need to tell me twice. Uh... Oh, what the... Oh, get out of here. What? Oh. 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 Hop. Hoppy. The whole tunnel's caved in. Yeah. It's blocked solid. Watch the snake. Come over here. Hoppy, we're trapped down here. And we can't kill off all these rattlers. Look, they're swarming out of that cleft in the rock. Quick. Pick up some of these splintered timbers. Start a fire. That'll keep the snakes back. Yeah, give me the candle. I'll start some of these slivers. Now, some more of the bigger pieces. <coughs> there, that'll do it for now. <coughs> yeah, for now. But what do we do next, Hoppy? Quiet. Listen. Uh, I don't hear nothing but them rattlers whirring. No, I hear something beyond that wall. That's water. The cave-in must have opened up a fissure. That's an underground stream. Oh, I ain't worrying about dying of thirst. Not with all them rattlers ready to get us as soon as the fire goes out. Look, notice there's not as much smoke in here as there should be. That means air's coming in. Where? Look there, the smoke is moving toward the wall where the water sound comes from. Yeah. If there's an underground stream, it means that there's some sort of tunnel. And the air movement means there's an opening. Hey, but, Hoppy, are you gone loco? There ain't no door in that rock wall, no matter what's beyond. But we've got dynamite. We'll blast an opening. Sure, but... No, no, no. Hold on, Hoppy. The explosion in this small space, it'll kill us. Ah, but that big rock in the far corner will give us some protection. But that's not the only risk. When we blast open the wall, if that underground stream is on a higher level than we are... The water will come pouring in here and drown us. Well, that'll be quicker and better than waiting for these rattlers to kill us. I'll get out the dynamite. Good. I'll scatter this fire to drive the snakes back from the wall. Then find a place to wedge in the dynamite. Puppy, here's the dynamite. Four sticks. But... But no cap. We can't explode it without caps. No caps? No. Oh, that tunnel didn't cave in of itself. It was dynamited. Somebody removed the caps from the sack so that we couldn't blast our way out of here. But who could have took the caps? We hid the sack and we... we... didn't actually see Rod put the caps in. We weren't watching the sack in the restaurant. When we first came to the mine, we left the sack outside for several minutes while we made sure the tunnel timbering was safe. Well, no matter who the dirty barment was who took him, he's finished us for good. Now we... we ain't got a chance, Hoppy. There's one chance, California, just one. Give me that dynamite. Huh? Yeah, yeah, here you are. But what good is it without caps? There. I got it wedged in the rock wall. It'll take all four sticks to do the trick, though. Yeah, but I still don't see, Hoppy. Uh, what you gonna do with that revolver cartridge? I'm taking out the lead ball. I'm gonna put the blank cartridge in the end of the stick of dynamite. That'll act as a detonator. Just like a cap. That's how we'll explode the dynamite. But you'll have to have some way to explode the cartridge first. Correct. We'll get behind that rock in the corner. Then I'll try to hit the cartridge cap and the dynamite with a shot from my revolver. That'll explode it if I don't miss. If I do miss, my bullet will just break up the dynamite. It's one shot, one chance. One shot. There's hardly no light in here, Hoppy, and what little light there is is all kind of wavy and flickering, and it'll be an impossible shot, Hoppy. I know, California, but it's our one chance to escape. Otherwise, we'll stay trapped in here. Yeah, yeah, it's rattlesnakes are drowning, or the explosion itself might kill us. Uh, well, uh, what are we waiting for? Shoot, Hobby. All right. Crouch down behind me. You ready? Here goes. 
Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Oh, God, I feel like I've been through a rock crusher after squeezing up through that crack the blast opened up. But just seeing this daylight is all that you're in need. Well, somebody didn't intend that we should ever see daylight again. Somebody took those caps. Somebody blasted that mine tunnel so that we'd be trapped in there for keeps. Yeah, and just let me get my hands on the low-down, sneaking, crawling, murdering son of a skunk, and I'll... I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> You'll do what? Uh, I, I'm going to take this nice big jagged rock along with me as a souvenir and bounce it off on the varmint skull. <laughs> but we got to find out who it is first. Say, hey, wait a minute. Let me see that piece of rock. Huh? Uh, this? Uh, why, sure. There you are. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Let's get to our horses. I got the answer to everything now. I reckon he's out in the back room. Black? Rod Black. Who is it? Come out here to the front of your store. What? 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 Cassie, uh, Carson, I, I didn't expect you back uh, so soon. The murderer didn't expect us to be back at all. Uh, what do you mean? Just this, Black. Fred Benson's killer saw to it that there was no dynamite caps in that sack when we got down into the mine. Then he blasted the tunnel trying to bury us alive. But uh, why should he want to kill you? Because the murderer figured we'd find out what Fred Benson found down in that mine. And what was that? It was what Fred Benson wrote in the note he sent you to give to his father. Why, uh, the note only said there wasn't no gold in the mine, uh, that it was... Well, the way he put it, a dead mine. No, Black. What Fred wrote was, there's no gold at all. It's a lead mine. Someone changed the L in lead to a D. That's the reason Fred was killed, so that only the murderer would know that the mine was full of lead ore worth a fortune. Then what you saw in this chunk of rock I picked up was lead? That's right, California. Our blast uncovered a big vein of lead. That's what Fred had discovered. That's why he was happy when Parker met him. And that's what he tried to tell his father in that note. Well, then that settles it. Pack Mule Parker, bring me the note. He must have changed the word lead to dead. He must have shot Fred Benson to protect the secret. And he easy could have swiped the caps out of the sack when you weren't looking. Why, sure. No, Black, it wasn't Parker. I examined that antique rifle of his. It won't shoot. The hammer's rusted tight. And what's more, Parker can't write. He's got what he calls his signature carved on the rifle stock. It's an X. A mark a man makes instead of a signature when he can't write. Well, now, that being so, it throws it right back to Slim Daniels, wouldn't you say? No, I wouldn't say. The idea of the fight between them won't stand up. Fred couldn't have recognized Daniels as the man who sold his father the mine because he'd never seen Daniels. Why, uh, you never... Uh... Now, who is the murderer? Why, uh, I just can't guess. You, Black. You're the only one who had a chance to change the note. Me? Then you offered to buy out old Benson for a $1,000. It wasn't for the mine machinery and equipment. Well, I just... It was wanted... because you knew the secret in the hill, that there was lead in the mine worth a fortune. So he's the killing boy. No, 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 hey, that's just a guess. You got no proof. You can't accuse a man without proof. You said that yourself, Cassidy. Black, I want to see you. That's yeah, old pack mule Parker. What do you want, Parker? We're busy. What do I want, he asked. I'll tell you what I want. Damages. Payment for damages from you, Rod Black. Get out of here, you crazy old fool. Get out, he says. I'll get out when you pay me an out of four. With my own eyes, I seen you dynamite that mine tunnel, blowing up my personal property. Hey, he's reaching for a gun. Stand back, all of you. You're not going to take me. I tell you, I'll shoot you all before you... Hey, he's out cold. What hit him? Just that chunk of rock from the mine I flung at him, Hoppy. <laughs> I said I was going to bounce it off in the skull of whomsoever was the murdering barman. Good work, California. Now we'll just tie him up, all ready for delivery to the U.S. Marshal for arrest for murder. Hey, Fraud Black is going to be arrested. How'll I collect my damages? You'll collect all right, Parker. You were saying you saw Black Dynamite the mine was all we needed to prove his guilt. You'll get the $500 reward. Me? $500? Sure. Why, I'll be rich. Molly can have all the oats she can eat forever. <laughs> well, I tell Molly. <laughs> well, the $500 will take care of Pack Mule Parker. 
Their lead mine will take care of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Benson, and the law will take care of Rod Black. There's uh, just one more thing that ought to be took care of before we leave Chenango Pass, Hoppy. What's that, California? My appetite. Today we come so close to never eating again, I'm hungry all over. <laughs> California, you don't mean to say you want another two-pound beefsteak? Nope. And this time I'll take a four-pounder. <laughs> California's appetite doesn't entirely run along the lines of adventure, does it? But when Hoppy and his sidekick go after snakes, whether they be murderers or a mine filled with rattlers, you can be sure that a snake of any kind is no match for them. Our next adventure with Hoppy in California takes place in Abilene, where a beautiful redhead becomes the victim of a murder, and the guilty man might have got away with it if it hadn't been for the memory of Mace Millot. Don't miss it. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Secret in the Hill was written by Paul Adams, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.